I hope this will be an interesting study. As we have often heard Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father. Now the right hand symbols power, honor, majesty, strength. Many people are right-handed. That's where we pick up our coffee cup. That's where we pick up our pen and start writing. That's where we hold hands with our spouse. I have neuropathy, and that's my nerves are dying. And part of it is my hand. So when I write with my right hand, I'm strained. i got to watch me do it. And when you lose your strength, you lose your ability. And when we talk about the right hand of God, we're talking about something that's never going to be lost. So let's run through the Bible, some, some verses of the scripture. They're up on the screen. In Colossians 3, 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above heaven, which Christ sitteth on the right hand of, the, of God. So the very first thing is it's simple where Jesus Christ is. We'll see this again. Jesus Christ, right now, unless the rapture had happened while we're doing this, right now, he is seated at God's right hand. We'll look at that. Because I say there are places in the Bible where it says right hand. I will tell you, and I teach, be very interested in the two words of right hand, in many cases, the ones we're going to look at today. Because they have reference to Jesus Christ. So, Exodus. And I have these in book order. And you can see them on the screen. Exodus 15, verse 6. Thy right hand, O Lord, gets Jehovah is become glorious in power. So the right hand where Jesus is of God, glorious in power. Do you realize what power God has, that he created everything? Everything we see and everything we don't see was created by God. It wasn't evolution. It wasn't the Big Bang. The power that he gives everybody breath to breathe. The power to take that breath away. The power to give gifts unto his children. The power to discipline. The power of judgment. The power of running everything that needs to be run. The power of visiting the grave of a sparrow. While over here, a man gets down on his knees and asks God to forgive him through Jesus. And a Christian is in a consecration camp and he's crying out for help. And a, a Christian woman is speaking to God about a wayward child. And God's glory is in power of his right hand. is He can hear everybody at once. And he never puts you on hold in prayer. You never, when you reach out to God, you get a business signal. You'll never get, oh, your wait time is, we care professionally about your prayer. You are number four. And you never hear that. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. The enemy is Egypt. I have to think there for a moment. God can exalt a person, a people, a nation. And God can take down and destroy a nation, a people, and a person. That's the power. Wait till he comes back as a lion in the tribe of Judah. He's going to be able to separate the nation by who helped Israel, and they didn't even know they were doing it, and who didn't help Israel. Who is the enemy, and who is for the Father? 
Psalms. We got a lot of Psalms. Psalm 1611. You got the King James Bible? You got 1611? That will show the path of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. The presence of God. At thy right hand, we saw in Colossians, is Jesus Christ. At thy right hand, there is pleasure forevermore. You know, it's foolish for a Christian to have pleasures in the earth, pleasures in carnivals, pleasures in amusement park, pleasures in a rat land, pleasures on a cruise, pleasures at a... Whatever they have pleasures in. And yet too many Christians do not have the pleasures of evermore. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Too many even think that what they're doing as a Christian pleases God, and it doesn't. It says to a point in Hebrews, and I'm not quoting it right, but Moses forsook the pleasures of sin for the affliction of the people. Today's church is all for fun, all for pleasure. VBS, which may have been at one time, may be a great evangelistic tool for children. The, the three that I've been in has turned into a circus. They got the worldly pleasures, not the pleasures evermore, which is Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father in 1611. Many churches don't even, I came out of a church that don't even have the King James. Oh, I hope this is 17. My writing. 17, 7, I hope. Seventeen seven Psalms. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. God's long suffering. God waits it out. God's not willing that any should perish. Judgment will come, but he stretches it. As far as he is able to stretch it for men to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's Jesus. We love him because he first loved us. O thou that savest by thy right hand. Them which put their trust in thee. From those that rise up against him. You put your trust in God. And he will save you by his right hand, by his loving kindness. And again, the right hand is Jesus Christ. You put your faith and trust, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And when you believe on Jesus Christ, you believe on the Father. When you believe on the Father, you believe on the Son. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. I don't care what the Jehovah Witnesses say. They're wrong. Chapter 18, 35. Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation. Here's the armor. And thy right hand has holden me up. Have you had trials and tribulations? Are you saved? Have you had heavy burdens? Have you become weakened by sin, by trouble, by the world? And have you gotten through it? Are you getting through it? Have you been in the valley and you're coming out of that valley? You're out of that valley? It's the Lord. It's God. It's that right hand that picks you up and holds you. And he's never going to let you go, he says. When you are in the arms and in the hands of, of God, you are in the arms and the hands of Jesus in your state. And he's never going to let you go. 20. Verse 6. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed, that's Christ. 
He will hear him from his holy heaven. And his saving strength of his right hand. That's Jesus. Salvation. Strength in salvation. The security of salvation. Being saved. God's way of salvation. Is through the right hand of God. And that right hand we've already seen. Is Jesus. 21a Thy hand shall find out all thy enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. You know, there are people that you know and they pretend to be Christians. They pretend to be lovers of God. They pretend to be right with God. And honestly, there are some people we don't know. We, they're so good at lying and deceiving. And yet our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will find out one day. He will separate. He will put forth. Those that are saved and those that are lost. He knows whose names are written in the book. And he knows whose names are omitted from the book. All the way going back to Adam. I don't know how many people there have been. He knew Noah was right. He knew Enoch was right. He knew Abraham was right. He knows if you're right or if you're wrong. He knows if you truly love God or if you hate God. You can't pretend with God. No way. 48.10 48.10 According to thy name, I am Jehovah, Jesus. O oh God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. You know, there are people who think, oh, I'm good. As, as a street preacher, that's the number one thing I heard people say. I'm good. And there are some people who think they're great. There's some people who think, we're number one, we're number one. Everything that you think you are, and everything that is true about you, you may be good, you may be great. You will be weighed against Jesus, the right hand of God, who is full of righteousness. And if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus, All your works, all your doings, Revelation 20, is going away against Jesus. You may be great, but Jesus is greater. You may be good, but Jesus is gooder. You may be love. You love. Jesus is love here. You may think you're pure. Jesus is pure. You may think you're right. Jesus is full of righteousness. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the only means. You and who you are and what your religion, whatever your stand of science, whatever it is, is not going to match the right hand of God. 60. I gave it a second. I forgot where it's Psalms. I thought we were in Exodus. Like 60. 60 verse 5. 
that thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and hear me. You know what we've seen over and over so far? That right hand of God is safe. Salvation. Mary's not going to save you. Allah can't, can't be your savior. Salvation is not of yoga. If you want to be saved by the way of God, salvation is of the Lord. There is life in Jesus. 63.8 My soul follows hard after thee, God. Again, that right hand upholdeth me. Whatever troubles, whatever miseries, whatever problems, whatever valleys, even upon the mountain, even the good times, even the joyful times, even the glorious times, God's not going to let go of you. Jesus Christ is not going to set you free. Never. We are His. We're forever His. We are signed, sealed, and delivered in salvation, which is of the right hand of God. 80. I hope it works well that up on the screen you can see the scripture. Verse 15. And thy vineyard, which Isaiah and Jesus said is Israel, which thy right hand has planted. Israel, the nation of Israel, the Hebrews, the Jews, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have been planted, have been formed, has been established, then through Abraham, for all eternity. God's never finished with the Jew. There's no such thing as God giving up on the Jew forever. That vineyard, Israel, Jerusalem, Judah, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they have been planted. They are the apple of God's eye. You better bless them. Because those that bless Israel will be blessed. Those that curse Israel, God will curse them. That nation of Jewish people, God planted them. That's interesting. 98. And there are other places right hand, but it has no ground to what our study is. Psalms 98 1. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arm, has gotten the victory. Victory in Jesus. Oh, victory. Victory over death. Victory over Satan. Victory over the grave. Victory over sin. Victory over the evil. And there's a song, the whole victory in Jesus. That's the right hand of God. That's the holy arm. People out there, they want to get a gun. They, they protect their guns. I don't need a gun. I got the holy arm. And that holy arm is the right hand. And in that holy arm, in that right hand, is Jesus. He's the victory. You know, people say about guns, you know, I've got to protect my family and all that. And then they'll turn around and say, well, I'll die when God wants me to die. Well, what if God wants you to die by that person that broke into your house? But we're not going to get into that. 108.6 That thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand. There it is again. There's that salvation. 110. You see a lot of save associated. 110 verse 5. 
O Lord said to my Lord, Sit down at my right hand. I'm going to make thy enemies thy footstool. Do you see that Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D? That's Jehovah God. Capital L O R D, that's Jesus. They're one and the same. Verse 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike kings in the day of his wrath. That's the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That Lord is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Revelation 19. That's the same capital letters as verse 1, verse 2, verse 4. Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. 118. Fifteen. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does validity. But, but, hey, I can't say that word. Validity. <laughs> you can see it. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does... There's that word again. I apologize. I had a word one time in the Bible. I was doing Bible study somewhere. And I couldn't say it. The guy walked up. Opened up the door. And he said the word how it was supposed to be. And slammed it. I'm not perfect. God is. Do you exalt the right hand of the Lord? Or do you exalt a ball team? Is your salvation the right hand of the Lord? Are you rejoicing in your salvation? Or is your salvation in something? Because if it's in something, and not in the right hand of God, you're not saved. 138. Or seven. I got terrible hearing. One thirty-eight. Two. I don't see it. seven. Uh, I made an error there. Somewhere at 138, I, I may have written, written down one thing. Let me look again. Holy praise and you, Holy praise and you, Thou have loved thy name. That's a great verse, Psalm 138, too. But I'm sorry I didn't do that. All right. I apologize. Song of Solomon. Two six. His left hand is under my head. His right hand does embrace me. Is Jesus embracing you? Is God embracing See, when, when God embraces his children with his right hand, he's embracing you with Jesus. And when Jesus embraces you, God's embracing you. When God is embracing you, Jesus is embracing you. He's hugging you. We've already read he upholds you. But embracing is love. It's a hug. I know sometimes we don't feel it. I've been in that. You don't feel God hugging you. You don't feel the Lord Jesus Christ like, but He is. Both. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48, 13. My hand also has laid the foundation here. My right hand has spanned the heavens. God created the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. 
so did the right hand of God. Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus Christ, is the creator, not evolution. When you mock the creator and the creation with evolution, Mother Earth, El Nemo, Mother Nature, you are mocking God and his right hand, the Savior, the Creator, Jesus Christ. They're one in one. Habakkuk. Aren't you glad you're going to see it on the screen? Habakkuk 2.16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let the foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned against me. Now this is sin. This is judgment. This is the wrath of God. This is the second coming of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, he's got a cup of all the nations. Jesus had a cup, too, of sin. A cup that was filled with all the sin of the world. There is not one sin that God cannot forgive you of. There's not one sin that Jesus Christ did not take on at Calvary. And when nations and people refuse and reject Jesus, He'll take his fury out on them as God took his fury out on Christ. It'd be better just put your faith and trust in Jesus. Matthew. Twenty six. Sixty four. I hope this is helpful. And Jesus said, thou, thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man, Jesus, sitting on the right hand of power. Jesus said, I'm going to sit at the right hand. The right hand of God? No, the right hand of power. Who is the power? God. You know, all these video games, you got to get power up. You got to hit this square, get power. You hit this star, you get power. You beat up this guy, you get power. You go up to a tree, you get power. If you want power, you come to God. And that power is God. And at the right hand of that power is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. And he's coming again. This time he's going to come as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He ain't coming back as that baby. Mark 14. Mark 14, 13. He sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go ye to the city. Uh-oh. Where am I doing wrong? Mark 14, 62. Well, I made another yeah, I'm not perfect. Jesus said, I am. Moses said, God, Israel is going to ask your name. What is your name? I am that I am. I am God. You shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power again. That's twice. And coming. And coming. 1619. Which you won't find in many Bibles. Most of chapter 16 and in many a part of Mark is taken out of the Bible. Mark 16, 19, so then the Lord has spoken unto him. He was received up to heaven, ascension, ascension, and sat on the right hand of God. There, there we are. There we got the position of God. And we did in Colossians. When Jesus went up, he sat down at the right hand of God. And everywhere we look at the right hand of God has been Jesus Christ.
Luke 22. Luke 22, 69. Henceforth shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the Father three times. Three times. In the Gospels. Acts. Five. Acts chapter 5, 31. Him has God exalted with his right hand G, to be Prince, capital P, and Savior, capital F. There's that save again. There is that save, Savior, associated with God and his right hand, the Lord Jesus Christ, to give repentance to Israel. There's Israel. God planted Israel. Jesus planted Israel, the vineyard. There it is. For the forgiveness of sins. That right hand of God is a prince. He's a savior. He saved. He planted the nation of Israel. He's righteousness. He also forgives the sins. Look at everything we learned so far. Acts 7. 55. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. This is Stephen. He's being killed. Jesus standing on his right hand of God and behold I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. This is the only time we ever see Jesus standing. And the moment that Israel rejects Stephen, Jesus sits down and Israel's is put off to the side. And the Gentiles come in. Jesus is going to stand up again. Revelation 19, he's going to get on a horse. Romans 8. You know, Romans 8, 34. I was accused and de church And my life tried to have been made a wreck. I had a preacher call DCF on me. And I was investigated twice by DCF. And they found, they found one thing wrong. It was very minor. My son and daughter, we had two bedroom house. My son and daughter were sleeping in the same bedroom. All they wanted me to do was put a divider between their beds. That's the only thing they found wrong. And this preacher went up to another preacher. We were going to try to go to church there and said I was filthy, I was vile, and I was, I don't know what he said. And, and the accusation is I was a Paul only. And what I did was, I, I, I asked the, the pastor of the church, I was going to do a neighborhood Bible study. And I, I, I tried to get the pastor's position. He said, go ahead. And he says, I'm going to be there the first day. I said, okay. And I was going to do the book of Proverbs. And I said, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to run Proverbs with the Pauline epistles. To show you how to rightly divide the Word of God, that there are things in the Old Testament that Paul says. And that man blasphemed me for, oh, he's Paul only. Oh, he's one of those, if Paul said it, that's it. Anything else? Well, we, listen, we did Exodus, we did Psalms, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Habakkuk, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts. I don't think I'm Paul only, is it? That man's a liar. And the church we try to go to supports that preacher. Oh, well. That was my five cents. 34. Who is he that condemneth? 
Is it that Christ that died, but rather that is risen again, the gospel, who is even at the right hand of God? There's Jesus, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He's at the right hand of God. We see it's not just Paul, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus saves. Jesus is full of righteousness. Jesus is full of power. God is full of power. Everything we've seen is a salvation message. He plants Israel. He's the creator. He's also, he prays for us. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God right now. And he may be praying for you. He may be praying for me. The Holy Spirit prays for us. This is a mighty, reverent position of the right hand of God. I hope it's helping you. Ephesians. Ephesians 1, verse 20. Which wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, resurrection, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. So Jesus Christ, the resurrection, forgive me, the gospel, he suffered and died, was buried and rose again. He's our Savior. He prays for us. He's powerful. He's righteous. He sits at the power of God the Almighty. He is the Lord. He is God. He is in heaven. He's not in that tomb no more. Hebrews. Hebrews 1 3. Who being the brightness of his glory, glory, the express image of his person. Upholding all things by the word of his power. There's that word of power again. When he himself purged our sins. There's the forgiveness of sins again. Salvation. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty, capital M, God, on high. Look at the salvation again. Look at God again right hand, sitting, and in power, brightness and glory, upholding, there's that upholding again, by the word, that's the creation, you see how's that the creation, in the beginning, and God said let there be light, and God said let there, God said let there be it all happened by the voice of God. 8.1 Now of things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is seated, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty. There's the majesty again in heaven. There's heavens again. A throne. Jesus Christ is set on the right hand of the throne of God in heaven, and he's our high priest. Boy, with this, with this study of the right hand, we're learning things about Jesus. That's 8 1, 10 12. Please share this video, like this video, subscribe to our channel to get more studies, because we do study practically every night. Give this video, send the link, say, hey, you want to learn more about Jesus? But this man, after you're offered one sacrifice for sin, not the Mass, not every week, not every day, not every month, one 
sacrifice for sin forever. Read that to your Catholic. Sat down on the right hand of God. That's Jesus Christ. He's the sacrifice. He's the high priest. He saves you. He's the righteousness. He's the glorification. He's the greatness. <laughs> he upholds you. He braces you. 12.2 Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Here's another one. He is the foundation, the writer, the ender of our faith. Don't you add more to the faith. Don't you say, I got Jesus and a little of this, and I got Jesus and a little of that. I got Jesus and Mary. I got Jesus and the Pope. I got Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. It is Jesus Christ alone, who for joy that was set before him endured the cross. There's Calvary. There's the death of the gospel week, burial, resurrection. He did it with joy. despising the shame, mocking him, naked, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, and we read that before. So scripture with scripture, the right hand of God, right hand of the throne of God, set down, sit down, placed. One place he's standing. I feel a sneeze coming, forgive me. You, forgive me, is Jesus Christ. And go back to this video to all the places I should have wrote them down. I forgive me for not. But all the things that we saw Jesus, the upholder, the embracer, the salvation, the creator, the lover, the righteousness, the glory, the high priest, the offer and finisher, everything with the right hand of God. Is everything about Jesus Christ. First Peter. First Peter three. Verse two. Uh -oh. First Peter three two. I did another book. Let's try second Peter. I apologize. Peter three I apologize. I really do. That's two errors I made. Peter 322. Who has gone into heaven? Heaven. How many times have we seen heaven? Where's Jesus? He's in heaven. Where's the body of Jesus? It's in heaven. Where's the body of Buddha? Where's the body of Allah? Where's the body of Joseph Smith? Where are the bodies of the Pope? They're in a grave. And is on the right hand of God. There it is again. Angels and authorities and power, power, there's power again. Being made subject unto. So Jesus, seated at the right hand of God in heaven, has the power again and the authority over all the angels, the seraphim, everything. 
God and Jesus, who is one in one, rule and reign heaven. I think that's what Darth Vader wanted Luke to do in Star Wars. Come, my son, and we'll rule the universe together. Oh yeah, Satan knows. And he tells men what to write, and they make millions of dollars. And you stupid enough to go buy the movie. You got one place. Revelation. I. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, that be God, a book written. You want to see something? A book written. We're going to go to John 1. 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word, capital W, was with God, and the Word, capital W, was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, creation, and without him was not anything that was made made. In him was life. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. That's Jesus Christ. Now, we got, let me try one more thing before we go. Okay, one more thing. Yeah, I apologize. 138. I really apologize. 138.7. Alright. 138 Somewhere I made a boo boo. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Okay. Thou will revive me. Revive me. Though thou stretchest forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemy, and thy right hand, this is the verse we missed before, I missed, shall save me. That right hand saves. That right hand is Jesus. That right hand is a Savior. That right hand is righteousness. That right hand is God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Please like this video. Share this video. Tell your friends. Subscribe to us. I want you to grow in Christ. I want people to hear about Jesus.